The other day, Mercedes finally revealed its Project One hypercar. Now, a lot of people are very interested in the aerodynamics of this car. I personally think it's far less aerodynamically interesting than the Aston Martin Valkyrie. But anyway, we're going to do a bit of a discussion of the aerodynamic characteristics and features of the car. Let's start at the front of the car and work our way back. If we have a look at the front splitter, we can see that it's raised in the center and flat at the sides. Now, I'm not really sure how much of this was a stylistic choice, uh, because often the center is raised by rules, regulations, and things like LMP, and it generally decreases the pitch sensitivity of the car, but I'm pretty sure the car is rocking quite an advanced suspension setup, so it should be able to manage that pitch sensitivity without having to resort to measures like this that can compromise total downforce. Above that, we can see a number of openings that are clearly for the cooling through the car. The majority of this air from here is probably venting out over this very large front bonnet vent, and then over the cabin. There's probably a fair amount of air being pulled out from those side ducts in towards the brakes. Now, a lot of this cooling would be to deal with the front motors, which are going to need a fair amount of cooling there, as well as some of the battery pack is probably going to have a heat exchanger up in here, and they probably have a few other little bits and pieces that are going to need a little bit of cooling air there. So far, this is still a fairly conventional strategy. There's nothing that unique about it. Moving slightly off center, we can see that there are more cooling intakes towards the back. And I'd say that these are probably what's feeding the main radiators for the combustion engine. In stark contrast to the Aston Martin, there seems to be quite an abundance of cooling airflow. Whereas the Aston Martin, I commented, was very questionable with how it managed its cooling flow. These fins on the side of the bumper, I'm not exactly sure what they're for, because I, I can't see how they're going to be providing any sort of downforce. I mean, often you see gurneys in this location, or if you open it up a bit more, you get to more of a time attack splitter style, or you can get a sort of bypass jet to jet out and pull the tire wake out. But this doesn't seem to be any of those. So I'm going to have to guess that the styling department got their hands on this region of the car more than anyone else. Now, while we're here, it's interesting to note this front splitter design. Now, the front splitter appears to be quite an interesting active aero piece, because in all these street shots, it's retracted, um, you can see just a little seam line at the sides, and then for track use, it extends out the front. So it's really quite interesting because that will provide a lot more downforce. In addition to that, there's little active louvers over the tires. Now, this is something they haven't really seen any of the manufacturers sort of work on having an active aerodynamics kit for, and it's quite an interesting one because venting over the tires helps relieve the high pressure region on the top of the tire, and therefore allows you to get better downforce performance. And of course, rather prominently, you can see this big intake up the top of the car. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that that is gonna be feeding air to the internal combustion engine. This side shot with the doors up actually reveals a great deal more information than you'd think. We can actually see the rough profile of the floor from the base of the door, and we can sort of look in behind the wheel and see how the airflow is moving around there. I'm going to hazard a guess that this car has some sort of small front diffuser going on in the front area and then is venting out the back of the tire. It's obviously a solution that flows nowhere near as much airflow as the Aston Martin solution, but the Merc has a bit of a problem in that its front wheels have front electric motors. And if you kind of look at where they have to mount, there's actually not that much volume they can expand a front diffuser into, which is always going to limit their front downforce. The current strategy they're using is obviously to vent the airflow from the front diffuser over the top of this side skirt. And that's a very similar strategy to a lot of sort of time attack cars that are out right now. In my CFD sims, I found that this little strake behind the wheel uh, sort of prevents the wheel weight from kicking in, and it means that you, you get a high pressure region on the outside and a low pressure region on the inside, and it helps draw out more air from sort of the inside of the tire so it can help work your front diffuser better and pull more downforce. With the wing mirrors, I'm guessing that they largely shaped that to basically get them out of the aerodynamic influence of the body, and I'm sure they have quite a few road going constraints in terms of where they put those. As mentioned before, we've got this rear cooling intake at the rear. Um, that's definitely going to cooling. It's not jetting into the tire because that will create an increased tire jet, which would make diffuser performance worse. And also there's a massive cooling outlet at the back. So we need to have something feeding the cooling air through there. Now the side skirt itself, again, fairly conventional. We've got a little bit of a step out. So we're gonna generate a bit of high pressure on the top and low pressure on the bottom. And that pressure differential will maintain a little bit of a vortex down the side, but nowhere near the sort of level that we're gonna be seeing on the Aston Martin. You can also see the rear, a shark fin there, much like a current Formula One car. And as per some of my other videos, you can see that the primary purpose of this is side force in your conditions, which leads to better your stability and better total lateral grip. 
The rear wing on the car is also active. It's a two-step design if you think about it. So it can go up and down as one unit, and it obviously has this second element that can slide off the back of it, um, turning into a dual element wing. Now, of course, it's got no end plates, uh, but what you can think about it is because the outer edges of the wing are at lesser angle of attack, they're basically sort of softening off that pressure distribution over the top of the wing, which is kind of acting like an end plate over a shorter span wing. Uh, it's not going to be perhaps as potent as having a full wing with end plates, but it does allow it to sort of fold down and sit all nice and flush. I'd imagine that if they're going to make a full racing version like a GT or something like that, that it will in fact have an end plate set up in a fixed wing. Again, we see the, these rear fins here behind the rear wheels, similar to the front. In this case though, like the, they're clearly tried to get a sort of body shape on the, the silver panel, but then they, they didn't want the flow to attach on it, and they wanted the flow to take a different path with this straight panel. Um, again, I think this is a little bit of a styling exercise here, more than it is functional aerodynamics. On the top, we can see a NACA duct, a really quite large one, which would be feeding additional cooling air to the engine. Uh, so we'll be ending up with cooling air that's probably also covering off um, our intercoolers and our uh, electric motor heat exchangers at the rear. And so we've got the cooling air from that top NACA duct and we've got the cooling air from the side. And that will all be drawn out through the back in this huge meshed area here, which is situated in a very low pressure region on the car. The area directly behind the rear is very low pressure. This will help draw air through and lead to quite efficient cooling. In terms of the diffuser, we have a very conventional diffuser uh, sitting here, nothing too fancy there. Seems that they didn't put a huge amount of thought into the strakes. I'm not sure if this is just because it's a pre-production model or if it's something they didn't really care about, but like, it's definitely not as strong as something like the Aston Martin in this area. The fact that they've used a sort of aero profile lower control arm on the rear also seems to indicate that the control arm is passing through the diffuser. Uh, which is an interesting design choice for a relatively low height diffuser. So it would be very interesting to see the underbody shots of this, but we're obviously not going to see those for quite some time. I think it's pretty clear though that in general Mercedes was going for more of a sort of world-class, class-leading powertrain more than they were a class-leading air kit, whereas the Aston Martin is perhaps the other way around, and we still have to see what they actually come out with for the powertrain for that. The bias of the Merc towards these active aero devices that make it sort of friendly for street use kind of shows where that trend has sort of gone. I'm not saying it's not going to be making any downforce, it will be making downforce, it's just in comparison to the other extreme concept like the Aston Martin, it's just not going to be in the same sort of vicinity. It's going to be closer to more sort of current hypercar setups. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this aerodynamic analysis of the Project One. I'm planning on also doing a quick analysis of some of the suspension setup on it. Uh, so let me know if that's a video that you'd like in the comments below. If you like this video, click that like button below, uh, subscribe to my channel for more, and hopefully I'll see you next time.